Pastor Ndele will be listening this morning. Let's welcome Pastor. Pastor, you're welcome. The Lord bless you, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Thank God. You. Hallelujah. Amen. It's been a wonderful time to be in service this morning. Always a delight when I'm privileged to be alive and also to be awake, to be part of what God is doing in the Lord's heritage. We thank God for his continual faithfulness, for his mercies that are new every morning. We give him praise because he's dependable, he's reliable, he's trustworthy, he is God. Hallelujah. So I want to say thank you to the media. I spoke with them this morning that they've gone a step higher. I appreciate every service and every department is contributing to the kingdom. The Lord will strengthen us more by the day in Jesus' name. Greetings to our ministers and brethren online. And I want to honor the house and all the servants of God in the house. And our senior pastor, we bless God for your life. I can't see the audience right now, so I don't have a spring of one who's on ground, but the Lord continue to strengthen you in every dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. The mercy of God that we receive by the day cannot fail because the Bible says they are new every morning. I was in my own Sunday school class this morning and we thank God for the testimony that I've heard of how God is making us to see greater things in the midst of what looks like challenges. But we thank God for his faithfulness. And listen, let's look open to the book of Psalms before I begin to preach this morning. The book of Psalms chapter 18. Read, read with me Psalms 18. Now, I, 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 if you can read the entire chapter on your own, a number of times today, you will, it, will, it, will, it will bless you. And the same, what is in Psalm 18 is in 2 Samuel 22. But let's just go into the middle of it, maybe from... Psalm 18, maybe let's just start from verse 36. Let's start from verse 36. It says, actually from verse 32, it says, it is God that giveth me strength. Hallelujah. It is God that giveth me strength and maketh my, my way perfect. It gives me strength. It makes my way perfect. It says, and sets me upon it, it makes it makes my feet like hinds feet and set me upon my high places. God is so, such a good God. It teach my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my hands. He has given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand holdeth me up and thy gentleness has made me great. I was reading this scripture this morning in this chapter, uh, just waiting for the time for me to come on. And I realized that as I read that scripture, no wonder it was repeated. It was a real experience of the psalmist. And then he's declaring God's greatness, God's faithfulness. He says that um, verse 38, I have wounded them that, he says in verse 36, he says, Thou hast enlightened my step under me, but that my feet does not sleep. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. You know, you're going to overcome every adversity of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, this, the, the ground under me didn't sleep. I, I didn't trip. As I was pursuing and fighting the battle of life, I was winning. I didn't trip. Hallelujah. And then he says that under me, the feet didn't, it didn't sleep. He says, you have enlarged it instead. And then he says, I pursued. Now look at verse 38. I have wounded them. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They are falling under my feet. Praise God. When you fight against you in every battle of life you're going through right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you are more than a conqueror. The Bible says, if you jump now, jump to verse 44. It says, uh, verse 43 says, Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen, a people whom I have not known just serve me. Praise God. Look at verse 44. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves to me. And verse 45 says, the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their closed places. I have an encounter over the night. And as I went through and woke up and I began to pray, this scripture came to my spirit. And I sensed an unusual realm of victory. Now, the strangers, whatever the cancan is, whatever the caterpillars are, 
whatever the demonic stronghold or spell, whatever it is that has hidden itself and you didn't even know is trying to eat your life out. In the name of Jesus Christ, I shall raise your voice in this day. The Bible says they will hear your voice, they will hear of you, they will run away from their hiding places. You may see a bit of shaking, just like when there is, um, um, what is, um, okay, a kutena, when there is a, a, a rat, yeah, when there's rat inside the closet, and you see the thing moving and shaking, the thing wants to run out, don't be scared. All the shaking you are seeing is because that thing wants to run out itself. When you see sometimes the animals are scared of you, we are scared of them sometimes, but they actually are scared of what they want to run. Instead of them running, we are the ones running. Strangers shall fade away. As soon as they hear your voice, we, we, they will run out of their hiding places. I declare this morning, whatever it is that has hidden itself in a corner, in your business, in your life, in your family, in your health, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that they fade away. As you make declaration this morning, hidden troubles of yesteryears, the Lord is exhuming them and throwing them into the abyss in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And um, verse 46 says, The Lord reigneth, and blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. Praise God. And in your life, God of your salvation will be exalted. That shall be a release. Now I want you to spend a few seconds. Just open your mouth and pray those scriptures from verse, from verse 28 down. Or maybe from verse, 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 verse 44 down. Whatever area. Strangers shall hear your voice. Out of their hiding places they will fade away. Whatever has been long standing inhibition. Long standing uh, troubles. The deliverance of heaven will come to you as you speak into the situation. So you speak to it right now. I say, I command delays to be gone. I command inhibitions to be gone. I command limitations to be gone. I command a fresh fragrance over my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Ali katumbre, ali kasate, kalute paliado. Mentro licita fraita colite papariade. Zeruklandi pratuskelito peliado bahaya. Every smell of, of every stench, every smell of staleness that any of the cankawom or cockroach has let upon your belongings, we command a fresh fragrance from heaven upon your being, upon your person today. In the name of Jesus Christ, every stench of smell that, uh, that the words of men has left against your identity. We speak the fragrance of heaven to flow afresh upon you this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise this morning for your word. We thank you because you that has begun a good work in us, you will perfect it. We bless your name. We worship you. We thank you for your presence already with us this morning in the service. Father, as we go into your word, Lord, we pray that, Father, you would bless us even the more. We worship and adore you. We thank you because yokes are being broken this morning. We thank you because light is shining in darkness this morning. We thank you because illumination is coming and insight is coming this morning. We thank you because every single one that has been hidden in obscurity is coming out into, this, into the light and breaking forth. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father. We know that you will do more than we can imagine or think. For you be praise, to you be glory, to you be honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, it's going to be interesting for you to know that this has become my tough, my terrain now. When you don't see anybody, you don't hear any feedback, you still just preach it. I do that every week now. So, but thank God I can see some of your faces. Even if I couldn't hear your voice, I'm still flowing with you. Amen. The Lord bless you and strengthen you on every side in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I've been enjoying what has been happening each time I, and I want to thank the media too. I don't know whether you set it up or not. After the Sunday service, sometime in the middle of the week, maybe Friday, there'll be a repeat on my phone. Another signal that people pop up the message for last Sunday. Um, I don't know whether it was set up to, to repeat, to replay, but I want to say thank God for the media. God bless you, Rich. So I usually have a, a, 
a refresher dose, you know, of the last Sunday by Friday. You know, that um, message on, on thanksgiving and praise was awesome. That message on um, the on um, forgiveness was powerful. Uh, all of the messages I've been hearing from Pastor Ed, from, I think I also was with, with the one with Mrs. Zakalade. The Lord strengthened every single servant of God that have been on the pulpit all these years. And you're blessing us from afar, even if you don't see our faces. Amen? All right, now, I realize that God is preparing our hearts greatly to be settled and established with him. Particularly when we spoke about that forgiveness thing. And one main statement pastor said was that grace and mercy opened the door for us to enter into forgiveness. Now, I think I'm going to pick up, I'm going to pick it back on that message this morning. When it is not by power, not by man, by spirit. When Pastor Luashina was preaching the other day, it was an awesome message. And so by the time I, 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 I pulled all of those messages in my heart together and I see a progression and a build up what God is telling us um, in the house. This dimension today is, the, the title of my message is the benefits of prosperity and a lively hope or a living hope. It wants us to enter into greater things in the dimension of an understanding of a lively hope. And so that puts our understanding beyond what we can see. It pulls our understanding of what God has in store for us beyond what we can even feel in the now. And that's a strong force to get us even more, much more consecrated and committed to serve the master, the true king. So open your Bible with me to the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5. 1 Peter 1 from verse 1 to 5. Peter. Have you opened the Bible? 1 Peter 1, 1 to 5. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace. But before he used the word elect in verse 2, he was speaking to, it says, people throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Now, those are provinces under Rome at that time, which today are part of what the area that you know that is called Turkey today. Even Paul the Apostle, when he grew up in Turkey at the time, it will surprise you that a lot of the churches that are mentioned in the Word of God here currently are in the region where Turkey is. Now, when he says in verse 2, he says, Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Grace be multiplied. And peace be multiplied. Grace to live for God be multiplied. Grace to serve the true and living king be multiplied. Praise God. Grace to walk in the ways of God be multiplied. That's what Peter was praying for them. Now, I believe that that grace was available. But maybe that generation did not transmit it a few generations down the line as strong as they got it. That's why today Turkey is mostly an Islamic environment. So God forbid that we will receive grace and not be able to pass it on to other nations, other generations after us. So God is saying to us today, and I'm saying to you also that grace be unto you as you continue steadfast in the faith until the face of Jesus we see. Amen. Grace be to you. As we, you see, because when God says, we will see greater things. And we're already seeing greater things. And we're learning what we need to learn to be able to see greater things. But the greater thing I'm focusing on today actually transcends what we can see on the earth. Praise God. Say so grace to you. Grace to you to be continuing steadfast in the faith. We are talking about the benefit of a living hope, a lively hope. The benefit we have received in Jesus Christ is to be able to behold what is beyond what eyes can see. And truly to speaking, that is deeper and stronger than even what we can touch. In as much as we already have testimonies of breakthrough, deliverance, salvation, 
you know, delivers from accidents and things like that. But what we can, what we are talking about today is beyond what eyes can see, beyond what hands can touch. It is what the spirit can perceive by faith, and that is stronger and keeps us consecrated and committed to the to the master Lord. Look at verse three now. He says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy." has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead has begotten us into a lively hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven, for you now look at that verse 4 again to our inheritance incorruptible so we're talking about greater things in blessings greater things in healing greater things in miracles yeah but there's something more as i read the scripture preparing for this message god lifted my spirit man that it's worth all it takes the call for consecration the call for self for commitment the call for decide push up and everything it costs to consecrate our hearts to follow God in this day and age it is worth all it is demanding because what we have been invited into is an inheritance you know what an inheritance is is that something that nobody can fight with you against it's an inheritance if you can prove I'm a child of God you have an inheritance into it and what are the characters of that inheritance they are incorruptible undefiled and doesn't fade away incorruptible undefiled and doesn't fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept i love this one reserve notice those three things the the the, the salvation we received brought us into our inheritance what belongs to us what we cannot miss out it never look at look at the 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 niv niv says from verse three now to verse five niv says Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in this great mercy, in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So the living hope you have, it, it transcends what you can see right now. It transcends the promotion you get at work. It transcends the healing you get in your body. It, it goes beyond everything you can imagine upon the earth. Hallelujah. Verse 4. An inheritance that can never perish. Preparing for this message moves my eyes a little bit away from all the blessings God has already blessed us with. Takes my face to where, where moth and, and nothing can corrupt. Where all the canker and the caterpillars cannot do anything about it. A place where my faith will not fail anymore. A faith where what is reserved for me is beyond what I can ever touch, even if I live 100 years. Look at that. It is never perishing. I, you know, I mean, you can imagine. Now, how if you have many houses, you just wait. And 10 years later, if you move, travel from your house for a year and come back, you will see ants all over the place. Even houses are perishing. How much more clothes? How much more food? If you have a vehicle, you pack it, you don't use it, you don't remove the battery, you don't hang it on some of it for half a year. Come back, it will struggle to start. It perishes. All right, but we have an inheritance that can never perish. We have an inheritance that can never spoil. We have an inheritance that can never fade. I mean, when I came this last trip, I bought this, my shirt, you know, that I'm wearing right now. I don't want to wash it yet because I've worn it twice. You know, here, you do need to sweat so much. So if I quickly wear it for some one or two hours, I go and hang it because I don't want to wash it too quickly because it doesn't fade too quickly, you know. But you see, it, you might have new dresses, might have whatever I need, it's going to fade there. But we have a lively hope. We have a living hope. What we have decided to live our life for, it's worth it. People are asking you, you are following Jesus, you are trying to be holy, you are trying to be pure, you are trying to be a disciple. Uh, sit down there. 
tell them it is a lively hope that I have been born into. Grace and mercy has granted me opportunity to receive forgiveness and ushered me into a lively hope. Ushered me to a hope that does not fade, a hope that does not fail. The demand for that hope is worth all it takes, praise God. My charge to you this morning by the grace of God is make a commitment to do all it takes to see heaven. A commitment to do what it takes to be with Jesus Christ in eternity. Make a commitment to do what it takes to live beyond all the blessings. You see now, I have an understanding that the latter days are coming. And if some of us will remember, there was a time I had preached a series of teaching on manifesting the glory of God, if you remember. Now God began to speak to me that the time for the manifestation of that word has come. So I'm glad I have some of the tapes. I'm pulling them out. You will see another book of mine uh, coming out shortly. One came out just not too long ago. Another one is going to come soon because the time is now. The time when there will be a separation from those that love God and those that don't love God has come. The time when healing and deliverance will become real in the house because, because darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people is going to happen that the Lord shall arise upon us and the glory of God shall be seen upon us. And then the darkness of the world will be gravitating to us because our faces will be shining the light that they need. Believe me, brethren, that is real. I know that beyond any shadow of doubt. That's when 10 men will hold their skirts to the skirt of a believer and say, take me to your God because we want him to teach us his ways. And we know that God is with you. So I'm going to follow you. It's going to be easy for us to feel this and do three services in this same auditorium where you are sitting down. If you believe me, say amen. And it's not going to be because you have the capacity that is special. It's the season. Bible says, you know, when the time comes in the day of his power, the people shall be willing. I know it. That the revival that we have ever seen in the world is a tip of the iceberg compared to what's going to happen in the last days. Hallelujah. Sa thank God for your evangelism last week. I trust you had a good time going out. You know, even in this same city of Ibadan, there was a time when, when, when there was a move of church planting. I was involved with it. Every corner you go, the slang in some of our mouth is, ah, this is venue, this is venue, this is venue, venue. It's going to come back. We will see mightier miracles. We will see greater breakthroughs. But you see, what God was speaking to me today is that that's even the tip of the iceberg compared to what he's talking about, this lively hope we're talking about. When we see all those miracles, when the believer has money to do the gospel, when God blesses you with many more houses, that's still only a tip of the iceberg. When we have many more professors in the midst of us, when we have institutions that are reigning as an attachment to Hedge of God Ministries, that is still going to be a tip of the eyes, but there is a living hope that can take us beyond what the human eyes can see. It does not fade. It does not spoil. It does not perish. Praise God. And then look at that verse 4. It says, this inheritance is kept in heaven for you. It's kept in heaven for you. It's a, you know when you call something a lively hope, you wake up in the morning, you think about it. And the song we used to sing that doesn't make much sense now again to an average believer is still real. When we get to heaven, at the marriage supper, all the saints shall gather. <laughs> At the last assembly, no more sympathy, no more heartbreaking, farewell to some, some of those songs that I learned when I got born again. That's what made me stop following Islam. That's what made me stay with Jesus. That's what made me decide to say, even though they will beat me, I will yet follow Jesus. That same hope is rekindled as I was thinking of this morning's service. I want to charge you. I want to share with you, brethren. When you are able to look beyond what God can give you, you're able to look beyond what you can benefit on the earth. What sustains your consecration to Jesus Christ is not because you're blessed with money. The higher thing 
beyond what earth can provide. It is an inheritance that can never perish. Would you give all it takes that we may arrive on that other side? And it will welcome us and say, welcome you good and faithful servant. Would you give all it takes to get to the point on the other side when you say, I have kept my clothes, my white garment pure. I've not stained it. Would you do what it takes when you will say, yes, I have followed you as the best of my capacity. Even when I slipped, you made me to be receive grace to stand again. And I kept following you. And at last, I'm here. Praise God. My eyes are fixed and gazed upon the living hope that keeps me looking until Jesus I see face to face on that marriage supper. Praise God. That's the charge this morning. Would you give all it takes? Now verse 5 says, Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of, until the, coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. So we know we're talking about greater things and we're going to enjoy it on earth. But my focus this morning is, can we for a moment focus that glory that will be revealed in the last time? A living hope, a lively hope. When the, when the, when the, when the 10 virgins were waiting, five of them were foolish. Five of them were wise. They had extra oil in their lamp, waiting for the bride, uh, for the bridegroom, waiting and say, I will stay put. I'll be here serving him all of the days of my life. I'll be here serving him even when it's not easy. When you will be determined to say, nothing will move me. Though tribulations may come, though persecutions may come, though challenges may come, though I may be waiting for a child for a number of years, though I may be believing God for my healing for a number of years, though I may be trusting God for promotion for a number of years, I will yet serve him. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. That's the living hope I'm talking about. Even if nothing works upon this surface of the earth, would you still serve him? Waiting for that living hope that is beyond what heaven and what earth can imagine. That is beyond what humanity can think about. That doesn't perish. That doesn't fade. That doesn't spoil. The Lord is calling us to a realm. And you see, when we have that focus of remaining faithful to him until Christ we see, while we are on the journey, the beauty of this earth will reach you no matter how. The blessings that God has stored up for you on this earth will, will reach you no matter how. I know that for sure. Look at the Bible. Look at the Bible. Now look at 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. 2 Peter 1 3. And I'll read from the New Living Translation. It says, by his divine power, NLT 2 Peter 1 3. By divine power, God has given unto us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of these by coming to know him. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Now, what does that mean? It says, another version says, God has given to us everything that heaven has for us to enjoy. Amen. What am I saying? We are not saying that let's focus on heaven because there is no good for us on earth. No. We're saying that in, four, in 2 Peter 1.3, God has given to us everything to enjoy on the earth. So we need to access it by faith. We need to access it by living holy and doing all of the things we're teaching currently now to see great things. Yes. But I'm saying, look at 3 John verse 2 and 3 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may, you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. Yes. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walk in the truth. Are you with me now? So thought John verse 2 and 3 is saying that when I heard that you are born again, the only thing I can wish for you is that you may prosper and be in hell because I know your spirit man is going, is going good. Meaning that on this earth, as long as you are a believer, you are qualified to enjoy the good on this earth. Because healing is the children's bread. 
because I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken and sit begging bread. Hallelujah. Everything heaven has is in store available for us to access. But I'm saying that more than that, what keeps me holy, what keeps me consecrated, what keeps me committed, what I decide to follow Jesus for is more than that. More than anything, more than anything, I love you, Jesus, more than anything, <laughs> more than anything, more than anything, I love you, Jesus, more than anything, more than what any man can give, what can life, more than what life can provide, more than what he has promised me. I love you, Jesus. I'm going to love you until I see your face again on that last time. That's the chart that God has given to us this morning. We have the benefit of a living hope. We have the benefit of a life of the mercy the grace that brought us into forgiveness, brought us into an inheritance of a lively hope. Praise God. So that none of these things move us when the challenges come. Praise God. Following Jesus every day by day. Nothing can harm me in the narrow way. Nothing can harm me in the narrow way. Sunshine or shadow, whatever may be. <laughs> Jesus, my Savior, is my all in all. What's God telling us this morning? Commit yourself to me, even if you can't see anything happening. That's why I like that song by Snatch. He said, when I don't see him walking, I know he is walking. So your faith is able to keep you on earth. Let your faith keep you until Jesus will see. Amen. Now look at 1 Corinthians 15, 19. It's a very popular scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 19 says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If it's only in this life we have hope, meaning that when God is speaking to us, that we are going to see greater things, as true as it is, that eyes have not seen, yet have not had what God has in store for those that walk upright with him, also applies to this earth. What we're saying is that it's not just about this earth. It's about commitment to heaven. It's about commitment to see the glory. There is a glory on the earth that the believer will manifest, which is weight, which is wealth, which is abundance. Yes. But there's a glory that comes, that transcends all of this when I see Jesus. When I see, and when he comes to take me home, what joy shall fill my heart when he comes to take us home to that heaven that is not going to fade, that is not going to spoil, that is not going to end. What a joy to live with him forever. What a joy to be with him in the place where he has gone to prepare for me. What a joy, praise God. I want you to understand that if there is a reason for you to live for God, it is beyond what you can see in the now. And if the demand for righteousness, if the demand for holiness is strong, it is worth it. Because on that place, there's no sickness. There's no sorrow. There's no sign. Even the streets are tarred with gold in our comprehension. And when I use the word gold, is because that's what language we can see. Because if you look through the scripture, the levels of the layers of the streets in heaven is beyond what God can describe. Glory to God. I want to, I want to fix my gaze on that. When I wake up in the morning, I say, Jesus, I love you. I will serve you today. Ha! My Jesus today. My Jesus tomorrow. My Jesus forever. Oh, I will, I will serve you today. So I want to ask you this morning, bro, what's going through your mind? We've been preaching, you will see greater things, and you can't touch it yet. You are wondering, is it worth it? 
sister, what's going through your thoughts? You've been preaching, you will see greater things and you can't touch it yet, you think it's fake. Now, while we encourage you to see, keep waiting because manifestation will come, but I'm saying, fix your gaze to something beyond. Fix your gaze to being with Jesus. Fix your gaze to eternity in heaven. Now look, let's go back to our scripture here. Let's look at 1 John 3, 3. 1 John 3. If you look at that 1 John 3 from verse 2. 1 John chapter, chapter 3 was, from verse 2 to 3 says, now look at that. Beloved, now, now in, in my own note, I made that now bold because I'm using it, I wrote it in my, in my iPad. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? How about it now? Wow. How about it now? Wow. Say it again, now. <laughs> wow. What a joy to belong to Jesus. What a joy that I can have what I desire because God is able to meet my need. So there's a benefit now. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. What a joy to sing your praise. I have placed my hope in you and you alone. What a joy to know him. What a joy to know that he's interceding for me now while he's on the right hand side of the Father. So when that scripture says, beloved, now are we the sons of God, that is a complete sentence in itself. I'm a child of God. I have access to God. Christ is praying for me. Everything is going to work out for me. Well, I have more than, I'm more than conqueror through Christ. But look at the next sentence. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. Glory to God. <laughs> eh. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when, we shall, when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purified himself even as he is pure. There's a glory on earth. But there's a greater glory in heaven. Glory to God. There's a blessing of being a child of God right now. But eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. What well, God has in store for them that love him on the other side. Hallelujah. We are talking about a lively hope. We are talking about a living hope. We are talking about something that is worth paying the price. Would you be committed to Jesus Christ until Jesus will see, in spite of what you are still trusting him for while you are on this earth? That's the benefit we've been brought into by inheritance. That's why you'll be walking on the earth. People on your left and your right are marooned, are downcast, are discouraged because life is hard and your hope is up. It's because you are seeing something beyond. The Bible talks about Jesus. He says, I mean, about Moses. He said, he saw the revelation of the invisible. There's something beyond what you can see. Why would Moses decide to move out of Pharaoh's house? Why would he refuse to be the next Pharaoh on the throne? Even though Ramsey who knew what the benefit of being the next Pharaoh was jealous of Moses. Moses was not bothered. He left that place because he said, I'm a Jew. I would rather be a Jew than be the Pharaoh. And at that time, Pharaoh was the head in the world. The Bible says he saw the revelation of the invisible. There's something more than eyes can see that Moses saw that made him to go against Pharaoh. And then he went back to that same palace to face. Who are you to face Pharaoh? His eyes saw something more. That's why when you have this living hope and lively hope that motivates you, your waiting will not be discouraging. While you wait for the breakthrough, you will yet trust in him. While you wait for the promotion, you will yet trust in him. While you wait for the husband, you will yet be holy unto him. While you wait for the wife, you will yet be holy unto him. While you wait for the children, you will yet be holy unto him. While you wait for the promotion, you will say, I will not define myself. I will not define myself with the king's mate. 
I will not do as they do because they want to have a quick um, money. I won't join the Joneses because things doesn't seem to be good. Why? You have a livelihood. More, more than what earth can see. You see, the Bible says, Beloved, 1 John 3, 2 to 3. Now are we the sons of God? Doesn't yet appear. You haven't known, you haven't seen anything yet. That's what the Bible is saying here. You haven't seen anything yet. Do you know that everything God has in store, I have not seen, yes, I have not had, neither has he entered the heart of my world. God has in store. When anytime I read that scripture, it means that, look, think about what if I can, what if I can see the most beautiful, I've traveled a little bit, nothing shocked me anymore. But I've not been to Switzerland. I wish one of these I would be to Switzerland. Because I hear that it's the most beautiful place. Right now, the world ratings say that Sweden is in the best place to live in. I'd like to visit the place very soon. I don't see what they even say is the best place to see. But you see, look at that scripture very well. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. He now said, neither has it entered the heart of man. So anywhere, I've been to Dubai before, and I've seen what they did in their country with money of oil. It's beautiful. And we can do that in Nigeria because we have... We also have the money. But God, 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 the deliverance of Nigeria has come in Jesus' name. Amen? Yeah. But, but then the point is, all of these beauties, somebody thought about it. An architect designed it. A town planner comprehended it. That means it has entered the heart of man. But what God is prepared for us has never entered the heart of man. So as a believer, you have something more than, even on this earth, that's something more than you can ever see. How much more what's waiting for you in eternity in heaven, praise God. Can we focus on eternity in heaven? Let that become the priority of our thoughts. Now are we the sons of God. What we shall be is yet to be seen. Hallelujah. Let that motivate us. Lively hope. Brethren, we have a lively hope. We have something to live for. We have something to live for. Now look at verse 3 now of 1 John chapter 3. Verse 3 says, And every man that has this hope in him, what does he do? Purify it himself. Even as he is pure. In fact, you have to read that scripture. Why did he say, why did he say even as he is pure? So let me open to a translation that can give me all, all translation. Why did he say even as he is pure? Anybody, uh, let, let the Bible teachers open there now and begin to look very closely with us, praise God. First John 3, let's just do a, a quick study there, verse 3. Even as he is pure. Let's look at what the contemporary English says. Uh, verse 3, this hope makes us keep ourselves holy, just as Christ is holy. Okay, so that he there is talking about the he of Jesus. That's what contemporary English version says. Let's look at the good news translation. It says in verse 3, everyone who has this hope in him, in, in Christ, keeps himself pure just as Christ is pure. Okay? Let's look at the New Living Translation. It says, it says, and all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure just as he's pure. So that, that means it's clear. So that means the life you live, okay? Now, uh, the life you live is the life of Jesus. Hallelujah. So will Jesus do this? Will be a question you will ask yourself all the time. When you get to the office and your colleagues are doing what you know that even your mind is telling you, am I sure this is right? The question is, will Jesus do this? Why? Your focus is beyond what the office can give you. Your focus is beyond what your colleagues are doing. Your focus is where you are going. There is a home in heaven that we are going to. Ah, You know, in recent time, we have not been preaching so much about heaven. But thank God in heritage, God is bringing us back to the realm, to the realm where we can be focusing on heaven. Where we can decide and say, I'm going to serve my master Jesus. I'm going to be with him. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to please him. As a husband, as a wife, as a child, as an adult, as a worker, I'm going to please God. Amen? So let's go back to our text now in, in 1 Peter. Let's go back to 1 Peter and let's read from verse 6. 
to verse 9. First Peter 1 from verse 6. The, now, the Bible now says in verse 6 now, it says, now look at what it says, so be truly glad. This is the NLT. Be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead. I'm, I'm from the NLT. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. Okay? So when your focus is on where we're going, the mundane, temporary, transient, negative challenges does not deter you. All right? Just like, I mean, just like myself and Mr. Edipo, we, we I think I've joked with that once or twice. Now, right now, I told her, I said that, ah, a quack bar is not easy. I mean, this lady, she's, she's, she's advancing the more during a doctoral degree. I can imagine what it takes. When I have some assignment to submit sometimes, even, I mean, as I teach, I, I do a lot of things, you can imagine. But the point is, when you are going through, even every student, you are going through reading for exam, ah, you burn candy, you put your leg in, what else are you doing, sleep? Why? Because you are looking at the day of graduation. So look at verse six again. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. What's going to help you to endure the trials? Fix your gaze on the lively hope. Look at verse 7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. So look at it on the other side. The trials are painful right now, but imagine the purpose. It will show that your faith is genuine. Right, that's what the Bible says. It is being tested, your faith now. It is being tested as fire tests the purest of gold and purifies gold. Though your faith is far from precious, far more precious than mere gold. So that means even gold, before it comes up, it goes through fire. Now, if you expect that to happen for the normal gold, how much more your own faith, your live lively hope, much more precious than gold, when it is being pummeled and challenged. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. I'm going to round up in, in, a, in a few seconds or a few minutes. I want to charge you. I want to charge. It's just a short exhortation to you that Lord, He knows what you're going through. He has your back. He's interested in you, but He's making a demand on you also. Resolve that from today. For example, if somebody has, as a member of the church, maybe you have, because I remember then I tell people that look, I got born again about ten times, nine to ten times. And there's nothing like that, really. You are born again once. But the point is that I get going back to sin and coming back. If I had been taught about what it means to have assurance of salvation, I would not have to repent. But in the first place, I shouldn't have gone back to sin. I kept going back because the world was calling me, was tempting. But the day I finally said, I'm no more going back, I must have been 1980. I'm no more going back. And yeah, I said, I'm no more going back. And I stood. Before then, nine times or so, so imagine somebody who's in church right now who has a boyfriend as a lady. Somebody who knows he's not born again. And then you do some dirty things sometimes and then you gotta repent all the time. But the person's not born again. Stop that relationship. Get out of it. Maybe you're a man or a boy who has the same experience. Get out of it. Let your gaze on heaven pummel your mind so that you are determined to follow Christ even when the temptation is heavy. You're in a business deal. That is not straight, but it gives you quick money to be able to meet the needs that are genuine, that are legitimate. But the source is not genuine. Get out of it. You'd rather be poor than to be unholy. Would you tell a lie to get out of trouble? Don't tell a lie for any reason. If you are to be disciplined, let them discipline you. The Bible says the trial of your faith makes your faith strong. It is worth it. So when the Lord has first of all described to us the livelihood and is now giving us the demands that what we need to do to ensure we get to that heaven, let's listen. Look at verse 8. Look at verse, 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 verse. It says, your, your, your faith is more precious than gold, than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Fix your gaze on that. These are my closing remarks this morning. Verse 8. You love him even though you have never seen him. 
Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. Verse 9, the reward for trusting him will be the eventual salvation of your soul. It is worth it. If you want to read that in the King James Version, you can also do that if, if that's the language you are used to, praise God. Now, if I jump to verse 13, I want to just quickly run through be a little bit of script, more scriptures. If I jump to verse 13, with the same first Peter, it says, so, so prepare your minds for action, NLT. Prepare your mind for action. Exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that it will come to you when Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. That's in verse 14. Don't slip back into your old way of living to satisfy your own desire. Don't do that again. You didn't know any better at the time. Now you know better. Don't do that again. Verse 15, 16 says, verse 15, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. 16, for the scripture says, you must be holy because I'm holy. Look at verse 17. And remember that the heavenly father to whom you pray has no favorites. It will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear for him during your time here as temporary residents. In my Sunday school this morning, we use the word that was temporary residence. It says abide. Abide in his presence, not as it, not as a visitor. All right? So on earth, be a visitor. In the things of the world, be temporary. But when it comes to um, the ways of God, the house of God, the, the will of God, let that be your focus. So that your relationship on earth, the dealings that you are doing, know that it's for a short time. Verse 18, for you know that God paid a ransom for, to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. It was not paid with mere gold or silver with loss, which lose their value. See now, it wasn't paid with mere gold and silver, which lose their value, meaning that he's comparing our inheritance that we are expecting for which doesn't lose its value. Verse 19 says, it was the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. I charge you this morning, brethren, live holy. I charge you this morning, brethren, be truthful to God. I charge you this morning, brethren, let us make up our mind to be resolute, to come out from among them and be ye separate. Every life that doesn't represent Christ, though it be challenging, resolve to follow the Lord. Heaven is worth all it takes to pay as a price to get in there. And because we don't know when it's going to come, we're going to be resolved to follow him. I'll read the last five verses in that chapter quickly, and I'll pray with you. I want you to go on your own and look into the word of God and be determined to follow him all the days of your life. Look at that. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began, but now in these last days, he has been revealed to you for your sakes. Verse 21 says, through Christ, you have come to trust in God and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him glory. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart for you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. That's important. You have been born again, not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it will come from it comes from eternal living word of God. As the scripture says, people are like grass. Their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God remains forever. And that word is the good news that you were, that was preached to you, and you received it. And the life you receive is the life that does not fade away; it's forever. What do we have the benefit of by being born again? A lively hope. In the midst of that lively hope is prosperity. Beloved, I wish above all that you prosper. It doesn't end there. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow 
Jesus. No turning back. No turning. Now, now, now look at me straight. If you can look at the screen straight. Look at my let our eyes be eye to eyeball to eyeball as much as you can. By faith, I know you are looking at me. Look, listen. I want to get to heaven and see your face there. I want to get to heaven. And me and you sit together at the feet of Jesus and ask him questions. Let's help ourselves. Let's help each other to get there. If somebody is getting weak, encourage the person. Don't make the person weaker. If the faith of a brother is getting low, encourage the person. Sister, if you know a sister who is also having um, um, inordinate affection and sin, rebuke the person in love and, and draw the person close so that they can get out of sin. If you know anybody doing the wrong business, challenge the person by faith and in love and encourage the person out of sin. If somebody is weary, go and visit the person. Stay, encourage the person. We need to make heaven together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's bow our heads to pray. Let's be resolved. Say, so, Father, I, I am ready to roll with you. Just take me by the hand and lead me. Bow your heads to get, bow your heads right now and talk to God. Tell God, I commit myself into your hands. I am ready to follow you. I, I, I commit my business to you. Anything I'm doing wrong, show me. Reveal to me how to do it better. I commit my being what I spend my time to do, what I watch on the screen, what I do when nobody is there. Lord, help me. Help me to caution myself when I'm alone in the quiet place. Lord, help me. Help me to be sincere with you. Let the grace and mercy that I have received that led me to forgiveness and brought me into this inheritance of living, let that same grace be complete to see me to the end, oh God. I ask you for help. Lord, as, as your heritage will come before you this morning, let give us grace that our gaze and focus will remain with you. Those of us that you have brought, all those who are in diaspora, all those who are in, in, uh, um, in their homes, all those who are in Kotila that are online, all those who are in Odebo Day that are, may not be online, everyone that are in any part of the world and those you will yet bring, those you just brought last week, that would belong to your church on the platform of this assembly. We will make it to heaven. That's our cry. So we receive more grace as we have received the benefit of a lively hope that will be sustained in this hope until Jesus will see. And Father, whatever they need in anybody's life today, Whatever demonic force that is operating in anybody's life today, I rebuke that demonic force. Whatever power of darkness that is inhibiting progress in anybody's life today, I command an end to that operation in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power that rose Christ from the dead, let there be resurrection in every deadness in anybody's situation. In the name of Jesus Christ, let deliverance flow. Let mercy speak. Let grace speak. Let help come. palika sate Intro listo fe pelatu si que te gatarando. In bredusque la tu se vreti papato peliado. Whatever it is that is a concern, a burden, a yoke in the mind of the people, oh God, concerning issues of marriage, of money, of health, or healing, oh God, meet every need, oh God. We cry to you for mercy. Intervene, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, give us grace to live above every temptation. Thank you because, Lord, you will give us continual grace to please you. And we'll be here serving you all of the days of our lives, even when it's not easy, by your grace. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Let's shout hallelujah like you hear it this time. Let's shout hallelujah. Glory to God. God bless you. Have an awesome week in the name of God bless you.